My name is Connie Sisko, and the photographer that I have chosen to do my presentation on is Larry Clark, the American photographer and filmmaker born in 1943. Larry Clark was born in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and he began taking photos at a very young age. Clark is quoted to have said, I don't try to be controversial, I just try to be honest and tell the truth about life. Coming from the art world, I never think that there are things you can't do or can't show. I think that Hollywood films are really underestimating their audience. I've been an artist for many, many years. I'm not interested in making films to make money. I'm interested in making work that I'm satisfied with, showing people's lives that aren't shown. If I could see this anywhere else, I wouldn't have to make these films. And I think this quote also goes for his photography as well. Clark grew up in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and he was the child of two traveling baby photographers. He began taking photographs with his parents for their business when he was around 14. Then, as a 16-year-old in the 1960s, a time in which the drug culture in America was increasing, Clark began, to, Clark began, began using drugs and he used his handheld Leica camera to capture his friends engaging in drug use, sexual, and violent activities. At age 18, Clark moved to New York and briefly attended an art school and continued to take pictures. <clears throat> he was then drafted into the army and served in Vietnam for two years. Then, after, the war, after he was released, he returned home to Tulsa where he continued taking his photo series. Clark's signature <coughs> in his past and present work focuses mostly on wayward teenagers who, in his eyes, signify freedom. The International Center for, for Photography states, Clark is known for his frank engagement with challenging subject matter. These subjects are an integral part of his explorations of various themes in American culture. The exploitation of teenagers in American mass media, teen idols as pinups and sex objects, the confusions the confusion confusions created for teen viewers by images of intense violence and sexuality, the responsibility borne by adults, especially parents, for the problems faced by young people, and the double-edged and largely unexplored aspects of construction of masculinity in American culture. He is also a new documentary photographer, and his subjects pretty much always fit picture youth using drugs or participating participating in sexual or violent activities. Quotes about Larry Clark. This quote is from Loring Augustine, a gallery in New York. Although drug use, sex, and violence are main themes, the images are often beautifully composed and his subjects are sympathetically presented. Tulsa, often compared to Robert Frank's book, The Americans, demonstrated a new style of photography that was subjective, alienated, and completely detached from any social agenda. Clark raised the ante for engaged photography. His work offered a lived experience rather than a merely observed one. His photographic career included many different series but the most popular ones were Tulsa and Teenage Lust. His major accomplishments included receiving the Photographer's Fellowship from the National Endowment for the Arts in 1973, the Photographer's Grant for the Creative Arts Public Service in 1980, and in 2005 he was awarded International Photography Lucy Award for Achievement in Documentary Photography. He also won private prizes at Cognite Festival in Du Film Polisiever for Another Day in Paradise. His photographs are part of many public collections, such as in the Whitney Museum of Art in New York and the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, in Boston Massachusetts. He also has 
some of his photographs on display here in San Diego at the Museum of Photography in Balboa Park. He also had a solo exhibition at the Gallery Orb and Orbe in Paris, France in 1992. According to the International Center of Photography, Clark's most recent photo series, Skaters, was a documentary type series that focuses on skateboarders in New York City. This series was similar to Tulsa in that it focused on the freedom that the misguided youth exhibited. It also showed the effects of parental neglect, which would become a theme in Clark's later photography. So this photograph is one of the ones from Tulsa, and it pictures one of his friends holding a gun. Clark states that people like Frank inspired me, but I really influenced. I was really influenced more by people like Lenny Bruce. He was all about the truth. He cut through the bullshit, and he was always commenting on the hypocrisy of America which I was living and seeing. It was important to me. I really was influenced by those kind of people. Here's another image from his book, Tulsa. The lighting, vantage point, and time at which his photographs were taken give a sense of intimacy with the subjects. In an interview with Larry Clark, he states, Well, you know I've had a camera in my hand since I was super young, and then I just had this epiphany one day that I could, t I could photograph my friends, because I've never seen anything like this. I was coming out of the 1950s where everything was repressed, and back then in America there was no talk of drugs and things like that. It wasn't supposed to exist, but it did exist. I was just kind of practicing my photography at first, and if you look at the book Tulsa, it's mostly in rooms, so we're talking about fairly small, confined spaces. He later goes on to say, I was just a part of the scene. It was very organic. It really came from a place where there was no thought ever to show the pictures, or to publish the pictures, or anything like that for a while. This is another photograph from his book, Tulsa, and here you can see like a broken window of some kind, and then it looks like this guy might have broke it or something. Clark's use of lighting is very effective in allowing people to see and observe the facial expressions of his friends, making it feel very personal. The vantage point he uses as well is very direct, which makes me feel like I'm standing at the place, same place as him, viewing the scene from an in-person perspective. Had these photographs been taken farther away, the subject's faces might not have been as present as they are, giving it a less personal feeling. This is another book. Uh, this is another photograph from his book, Tulsa, in which a baby sleeps with his abused mom. Here you can see her black eye. This is a photograph from Tulsa as well. And we can see a gun and a gunshot wound in this guy's leg. The timing that Clark uses in his photographs makes me feel as well as though I was personally there or if I was looking into through a photo album because all the facial expressions and movements of the people seem like a movement frozen in time and very, very real. This is another photograph from Tulsa. It shows a girl shooting up. This is an image from our book, and it's also from Tulsa. This is another photograph from Tulsa.
this I'm not sure what photo series it came from but most of the photograph that, photographs that I've found feature Jonathan Velasquez which is a professional skateboarder and his friends This is Jonathan Velasquez as well. It looks like he might have had like a firecracker up his butt or something like that. This is kind of a funny photo. It's also Jonathan Velasquez. Here we can see his more risque, I guess if you want to say, photographs of Jonathan Velasquez and Tiffany Lemos. Also Jonathan Velasquez. Also Jonathan Jonathan Velasquez and his friends. Larry Clark's significant significance was very related to his involvement with New Document and his artwork. His photographs, his photographs were very startling and disturbing to some people, and they influenced the raw photography and unseen parts of life, and they also helped to un influence other photographers such as Nan Golden and Prince. According to our book, New Documents promoted a radical rethink of document photography. The book also quotes Tarkowski describing New Document artists. He says, In the past, this new generation of photographers has redirected the te technique and aesthetic of documentary photography to more personal ends. Their aim has not been to reform it, reform life, but to know it. According to Interview Magazine, Tulsa, Clark's first photo series captured a rogue, nightmarish side of American youth with a documentary-style surrealism that would become Clark's signature. He also inspired other photographers such as Nan Golden and Prince who desired to capture the more raw, unseen aspects of life. The fact that Clark also was directly involved in his photography is very unique as well. He had a personal relationship with his subjects and was often participating in the same activities that he pictured them doing, and he wanted to capture those that were directly involved rather than considering an outsider's perspective.